let us now look at this um, aspect of connections between correlation and linear regression a bit more closely and then we will of course continue this discussion even tomorrow. Remember I said as far as linear models are concerned it is sufficient to know the first and second order moments and here is an example very simple example. In fact just now we talked about it I said if you are given data of y for y and x how do you estimate alpha in fact now that is what you see on the slide which then establishes the connection between the uh, <coughs> correlation and linear regression. So, it turns out that when I want to fit a linear model so let us say I assume perfect linear relationship y hat equals b x. Remember now I have not written y equals b x I am saying that I am going to predict y using a linear function of x this is the linear regression problem. When I do this then let us say I obtain estimate uh, of b by minimizing expectation of y minus y hat square we, we have done this before but in a slightly different context. Now when you try to do this that is when you try to estimate b by minimizing the sum square error or mean square error rather not sum square error the resulting estimate is what you see uh, on the slide but I will also write this on the board b star you can actually do this in fact it is a small homework you should do that b star is sigma x y by sigma square x. In fact I could also have b x plus a but I did not just for the sake of convenience include that. So, you can see straight away that as far as estimation of a linear model is concerned or as far as linear regression is concerned I only need to know sigma x y and sigma square x. What are they? They are the sigma x y is the second moment of the joint pdf and sigma square x is the second moment of the marginal pdf that is all I need. I do not need to know anything more as far as the linear regression is concerned but if you want to fit a non-linear model then you will need the knowledge of higher order moments. This is typical I mean although I have just taken the bivariate case you can extend this to even the trivariate or multivariate case in other words if I were to predict y using x1 and x2 for example if I were to write y hat as b1 x1 plus b2 x2 then even when you sit down to optimally estimate b1 and b2 you will see that only covariances and the variances will appear apart from that you will not run into any higher order moments right. So, of course, now you can rewrite this as sigma y over sigma x times rho x y and there is a reason why we write that. You can see straight away first of all that when covariance is 0 what is the optimal estimate of b 0 sigma square x cannot be 0. So, when correlation is 0 there is no hope for any linear model you cannot come to the conclusion that y and x are not linearly related and so on that is got in practice in practice because you will be working with estimates. But theoretically yes when correlation is 0 that means there is no linear relationship between y and x whatsoever your linear model will not do uh, be of any help to you. Now we will close this uh, today's lecture with a very interesting observation which is suppose I interchange the roles of y and x that is I would like to predict x using y I say x hat let us say is being predicted with using y I can do that but now let us let me denote again I am using a linear predictor let me denote the coefficient as b tilde and again going through the same thing that is find b tilde such that the mean square uh, prediction error 
is minimized. So you can think of this as some kind of a forward model if you like it and this as a reverse or you, you can think of this as a forward, this as a reverse. It does not matter because at this moment we have not said whether x is the cause and y is the effect. I do not really worry about that. I am given one, I want to predict the other. So here I am given x, I am trying to predict y. Here I am given y, I am trying to predict x. What would be b tilde star? Sigma? I hear the numerator synchrony or symphony, but denominator? Sigma square y, okay. So the denominators are also in synchrony. So sigma, I mean you may think of sigma y x, but it does not matter. The order of subscripts does not matter here. Sigma square y, right? Which again I can rewrite as sigma x by sigma y times rho x y. Now you, you should straight away observe that the squared correlation is b star times b tilde star, right? What is the importance of the result? I mean it is it's adding colour to the board and so on, but what is the importance of this result? Do you see any importance of the result or it is yet another relationship for you? Can you infer anything nice from this result, useful? Sorry? What is less than 1? Why? Rho x y is always less than or equal to 1 in magnitude. But why you say from this relation you infer that? Because you think the product have to be some kind of less than 1? Interesting but not something that we are looking for. Anything else? Earlier we said something about correlation that it does not know any direction. It has effects of both directions. You can see this uh, that the squared correlation captures the effects in both directions. That means if I give you squared correlation or correlation alone, you will not be able to figure out how much is b till and how much is b tilde. That is how much is a contribution in one direction versus the other. You will not be able to say that. It is a factor, correct? So this result actually clearly tells you that correlation is, uh, a sim I mean why also reinforces the fact that correlation is symmetric. Apart from that, it says that it captures the effects in both directions. Of course, it is another way of computing your correlation. You can fit a linear regression, I mean linear model in both directions it gives you a parametric way of estimating correlation. Suppose you want to estimate correlation, you can fit a linear model between x and y with x as a regressor and y as a predictor and vice versa and compute the coefficients. The product of that is a squared correlation. Now another use of this uh, result here appears later on, in fact tomorrow when we talk of partial correlations. Today we have talked about correlation, extensively about covariance and correlation, but uh, and established that correlation is a measure of linear dependence, that there is a strong connection between linear regression and correlation, that it, uh, it only suffices to know the first and second order moments when it comes to fitting linear models and so many other useful things about covariance and correlation, but there are some limitations of correlations apart from the fact that it does not have directionality embedded in it, it does not know the physics. There is yet another limitation of just working with correlation which is that of confounding. We will uh, 
take up this concept tomorrow in detail. That is when I find x and y correlated, <coughs> sorry, it does not necessarily mean that they are directly related. Okay. And there are some very classic examples doing that and one of the <coughs> sorry examples is let us say I look at the number of fire engines being sent out from a fire station you know and the damage is actually caused by fire in a in a nearby locality. If I had this data number of trucks going out of a fire station and the damage caused by the fire do you think they would be correlated or not? What do you think? Yes or no? No. Then why would you send out trucks? What do you mean by that? Fire is a fireman. Does not matter, but the more trucks that you send, is it a inverse I mean is it a inverse correlation or direct in a sense a positive sign or negative sign the correlation? Positive. So, the more trucks that you send more damage you will see. No, first let us ask what is the sign of the correlation. First of all do we agree there is a correlation between the number of trucks sent out from a fire station and the damage caused assuming the trucks are going there they are not going uh, some Pokemon or anything like that. <laughs> but okay, assuming they are going to this locality, do we, we do see a correlation? Now, do we expect to see a negative valued correlation or a positive valued correlation? Negative. 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 Your answer is in the negative. Okay. So, it is right. So, the more trucks you send, the uh, lesser the damage should be. But tomorrow we will take up some data where we will see if this is true. Okay? We will see if this is true and ask why is it that we do not see what we expect to see. Okay? We will meet tomorrow.